Good evening, everybody. Hey, I'm coming to you with something that's just fascinating uh, from a Michael Penn video. And his approach was to start out with uh, K being P or prime and trying to show that this thing was unique. I'm just coming at it from a slightly different angle. It's the same basic structure. I'm going to go ahead and assume that K is composite. All right. Now, and show that that does not give rise to a unique representation here. Now, he actually left that as, as a, an exercise for the viewer. So here, here's a viewer doing the exercise. Now, the, the funnest thing about this was learning about this completing the product. I'd never heard of it. Everybody's heard of completing the square, but he taught us how to do completing the product. And so if you start with this given right here, two over K, where K is composite. And again, I'll repeat the fact that K is composite doesn't even have anything to do with the algebra here. The algebra is the same whether K is prime or, or K is composite. But, but anyway, if, if you multiply through by KMN right here, you end up with this piece right down here. And I'll leave out some of those details. You can see what cancels. And, and also, <clears throat> and this was a little mysterious, but you multiply through by two and then bring it over and make it equal to zero. Okay, so again, if you multiply this entire expression by two, I let that step out just to avoid the clutter. Multiply this entire expression on the left-hand side by two, you end up with this equation on the right-hand side equals zero. All right, now the completing the product, it's analogous to completing the square. You add k squared to both sides, okay? And then now, this is a little different, but it's the same essential structure as completing the square. 2m times 2n gives you the 4mn right here, and then all these cross terms add up to give you these negative terms in the middle. And of course you get uh, k squared. Now, so you have completed the product. You had the sum of four terms, four terms, not a product. And now you have a product. So you literally completed the product. I can't believe I've taught math all these years and never knew about this, all right? But this gives us a chance. Now at this stage in the problem, if k were prime, the only possibilities would be p squared times one and then p times p. And you would have to pick p squared times one because it's, I'm assuming that M is greater than K at the very beginning here. Uh, so uh, that, that would rule out the possibility of K by K or P by P being your choice, all right? And so your only choice would be K squared times one is the factorization for K squared. As far as just looking at, now K is composite, but we're just going, I'm not saying this is the only choice since K is composite, but it is a choice. Now, if it is a choice, uh, you can set uh, each one of these factors. You can set 2m minus k equals uh, to k squared, but that's the same thing if you notice here as just setting 2m minus k equal to k squared, then 2n minus k equal to 1. Okay, again, this k squared right here, uh, you see right here, let me, well, that's gonna, is that gonna hide for me? Yes. Okay, that's that k squared right there, and then this 1. You see right here is this one right here. Now, when you solve, you do get, um, you get N and M uh, in terms of K. You see right here, you have M in terms of K. You, you could factor this if you want to. You could say K times K plus one. I just left it K squared plus K over two. But you do get M in terms of K. The M would go right there. And then you get N in terms of K also. So you, you've done it irrespective of whether uh, K is prime or not. Okay, that's something. Now, so let's go, he, he wanted us to try 15, which he called the first odd composite number. He was mistaken there. Somebody named, somebody pointed that out. Uh, nine is the first composite. I don't know if he was just saying that off the top of his head, but nine is the first odd composite number, not that it matters. All right, now, but let's go ahead and use this truth right here, uh, two over 15 can be written like this, and I'm just using the result here, folks. Uh, K squared plus K over two goes right here, and then K plus one over two goes right here. And this leads to the rendering of this, uh, uh, the sum of two reciprocals here. And I just went ahead and confirmed it was indeed equal to two over 15. The algebra, you know, I just checked it out arithmetically and it works out. So we do have a representation here in this form. 2 over 15 for the choice of k equals 15 gives you uh, the desired form, all right? Now, it's easy to stop right here and go, okay, done. But notice right here that uh, for k equals 15, this would have been 225 times 1, not that you needed to really know that to, to, to do the algebra, okay? But this 
if, if for k equals 15, you would have had 225 times 1. But notice that uh, 225, but, and this is because of the composite nature of, of 15, can also be written as 3 times 70 or 75 times 3. Now, just a quick aside, if, if, if uh, k were 13, your only possibilities would be 13 times 13 and 169 times 1. Okay. So uh, anyway, that's, that's kind of neat to see it right then and there. So we can go with 75 and 3. And when we do that, folks, we get m equals 45 and n equals 9. All right, so that's on the next line here. Um, and I apologize, I couldn't get that all on one screen, but I want it to be big enough. So again, you get 2 over 15 is equal to two different representations. It's the sum of what you, some, I guess you can call it a unit reciprocal or a unit fraction. Now, again, I repeat, this could not happen if P were a prime. And again, I'm, re I'm just repeating myself here, but if K were equal to P, P times P and P squared would be the only possible factorizations, right? That's kind of interesting. So it would be unique if P were prime. And again, that's all the way back to right here. This would be the only statement we could write down. This, was, this is the only statement we could write down owing to the primality of P. All right, folks, uh, I, to me, that's cool. I learned how to complete the product and also did the special case to show that the composite function yields two representations of the desired form. All right, thanks.